Hello and welcome to our next video and we're joined by lots of people here on screen because it's a very big project and it's very much a collaborative project that you're going to hear today um, and the category was procurement consultancy project of the year and it was Arcadus and Southern Water. Um, so all of these videos are hopefully here to um, help you understand about more about the winning entries from last year's awards and inspire you to enter um, for this year. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Steve, who will introduce the team and get going, and then I'll come back in a bit and ask some questions. So over to you, Steve. Wonderful. Thank you, Emma. Thanks so much. We were so delighted to, to win the award with Southern Water uh, in September last year uh, and really grateful for the opportunity to share our story today. Uh, it was very much a collaborative effort, so I'm delighted to be joined by colleagues from both Arcadia and Southern Water, Stephen Coleman, Sam Palmer and Lisa Wesley from Southern Water uh, and Seb Durrell and Matt Philpott from Arcadis. So we're going to talk you through um, what we did um, through to the outcomes that we achieved uh, and hopefully there's some useful learnings in there for others. And I'm going to start by asking Stephen to talk to us uh, a little bit about the business drivers behind the program from a Southern Water perspective, uh, and also why Southern Water chose to work with Arcadis. So I'd like to ask Stephen Coleman from Southern Water uh, about the business drivers for the project uh, and why uh, you chose to work with Arcadis. Thanks, Steve. So uh, Southern Water, like all water companies, every five years goes through a business uh, 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 plan review cycle. Uh, it's part of the regulatory uh, requirement from Ofwat. Um, and we were in the process of preparing ourselves for uh, this current uh, business plan uh, period. Um, and having reviewed that, we'd identified that we had missed uh, a, a number of our key performance targets although we'd had got all the right ingredients in place across our supply chain, um, we had a number of gaps that we had to address uh, in order to meet the benchmarks that our regulator off what sets. Um, one of those biggest uh, uh, challenges was around driving efficiency. Um, and at the same time as driving a, an improvement in, in, in efficiency, uh, we also had an increased uh, level of uh, activity uh, and investment uh, across uh, our next business plan. Um, so with that challenge uh, and the historic uh, relationships we have with our supply chain under some strain, uh, we had quite a lot of process complexity, cost escalation um, and slow progress for some of the work that we needed to achieve. We took the decision uh, with our board and our executive leadership team to re-procure re our existing supply chain rather than go out to the market for a full retender exercise. And the reason we did that is that we felt we did have all the right supply chain partners, uh, but we just had to identify how we could work better together. Um, and therefore we wanted to work with a, 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 a consultancy partner that would help us identify uh, the right uh, change program, uh, the right activities to support and create uh, the right commercial model moving forward. Um, and we chose to work with Arcadis for a number of different reasons, but in the main, the collaborative approach they put forward to us um, in terms of how they would work to develop that commercial and procurement strategy. Uh, but equally, their sector experience, construction, construction industry experience, and their ability to really analyse the complex data and nature of our relationships uh, was key to that decision. Great, thank you, Stephen. Uh, and Seb, could you talk a little bit about the approach that was then taken to address those challenges? Absolutely. Um, after having worked with Southern Water to establish the, the strategy and the business case that uh, Stephen has just outlined, the first step was to, to form a joint Southern Water and Arcadis team uh, to deliver the strategy that had been agreed. And the diagram you can see on the page shows the approach taken to do that. The focus of the approach was on finding new value to secure the big efficiency target that had been agreed and identified. The first area of activity was focused on the identification, design and delivery of over 40 different operating model changes required to release efficiency. This was supported by a benefits management approach, 
linked, linking detailed, enabling change to efficiency, to outcomes reported at board level. And it was this detailed understanding of the drivers of benefit that subsequently steered and informed all other aspects of the programme. The second area of activity was focused on delivering a new commercial framework at the core of which was an improved incentivization mechanism and renegotiated contractual arrangements. Now this activity commercially secured the future requirements and also the associated efficiency. A third area of activity was focused on the implementation of an SRM capability to foster the collaborative supply relationships required to embed the efficiency changes. And finally, across all of the areas I've just outlined, there was a people and change management activity set that was delivered to support the adoption of the changes implemented. So at a high level, that was the introduction to the, to the program approach. And now I'll hand back to Stephen and the rest of the team to talk through some further detail on how it was delivered. Great, thank you, Seb. I'd like to explore the commercial model in a little bit more detail uh, and ask Simon to talk to us about how that model was arrived at and agreed with the partners. Yeah, thanks, uh, Steve. So um, as you've already heard from uh, Stephen and Seb, we had some quite significant uh, efficiency challenges to achieve. Uh, and um, we had to, in order to do that, we really had to work with the supply chain to explore all opportunities uh, to secure future efficiencies. But we started off by reviewing the lessons learned from the AMP6 model. Uh, from that, it was clear that uh, the operating model had some had driven some poor behaviours, uh, had created strange, relation, strange, relation, strange relationships and lacked collaboration. Therefore, the new model needed to support a more integrated approach, which draws on in industry best practice uh, to reward innovation uh, through integration and efficiency. Our thinking was guided by the principles of Project 13 framework created by the Institute of Civil Engineers and the Infrastructure Client Group, and also the input uh, from uh, the approach taken by other utility companies. So the first step we took was to uh, design a, a supply chain operating model, which was aligned to the, the asset life cycle process, which we introduced as part of our wholesale transformation. A key element of that was to uh, involve the supply chain earlier in the design process, thus allowing them to contribute to and influence choice of solutions. Leading on from that, we then worked with our supply chain partners to identify specific in, in improvement opportunities based on their experience from AMP6, examples of which were design standardization, off-site manufacture, collaboration, planning, uh, structured work allocation, and also collaborative purchasing. We obtained commitments from the partners to the level of efficiency that could be delivered from each opportunity and developed detailed implementation plans. The commercial model was then designed to incentivize delivery against our business plan and ensure that these efficiencies were embedded. I'll now hand over to Matt, who will cover this uh, and the negotiation and contracting process in a bit more detail. Okay, good afternoon. Um, so we're talking through, first of all, the initially one of the key areas of focus for us was around commercial insight and bringing that from an Arcadis perspective. So we use commercial industry benchmarks to understand the efficient, efficient rather, should cost position to allow for a fact-based negotiation with the suppliers. Now for us, this provided us with a consistent and credible base position to refer to throughout the negotiations. In terms of what we did, we designed a two-stage incentive model, which collectively incentivized both parties against Southern Water's business plan challenge which was set by the regulator. And ultimately it was reset at a point of a preferred solution was locked in through the design process. The idea here was to encourage both parties to collectively work together from an early stage towards one common goal or the common pound as we all called it. Um, this encouraged innovation, collaboration and reduced hard design handoffs. I think pivotal to the agreement of a model that worked for both parties was a process of extensive and transparent scenario modeling to aid the negotiations. In terms of managing the negotiations, we resolved probably in excess of around 800 contractual queries during the procurement process in agreeing the right contractual model rather for each work type based on the NEC3 and NEC4 forms of contract. This ensured that the commercial agreements we arrived at considered all flavours from the supply chain, but also resulted in common agreements based around the same framework. And this order, this was basically done in order to simplify um, the administration uh, post-negotiation. 
in terms of embedding change um was was really key enabler to um holding on to the value that was gained through the commercial transformation and through this we embedded and sustained the change for a comprehensive training syllabus ultimately this covered in excess of 600 people from multiple organizations which also included the partners from our perspective implementing this across all of the organization was key to promote the one team philosophy and positive behaviors that underpin them. And finally, we installed a process of testing and feedback to ensure the training was effective and knowledge was tra um, successfully transferred. I'll hand back to Steve. Great, thanks, Matt. Uh, I'd now like to ask Lisa to talk about supplier relationship management and how that's been used to really embed ongoing performance, collaboration and continuous improvement. Um, as you've as you've heard, the uh, the uh, a challenge was significant in terms of the efficiency that we had to derive, um, and that required, as you've seen, uh, the development of a a brand new commercial model. Um, the success of those commercial models is is underpinned by the right behaviours, primarily collective versus individual success. So, in collaboration with our stakeholders, which included internal stakeholders and our supply chain partners, in this AMP, we are driving a significant change in terms of how we manage and develop our, our supply chain relationships. So, we've developed a framework um, to create those conditions for success, um, where we align on the outcomes, the required outcomes and priorities of our relationship, and have means in order to constantly assess progress against that and realign where necessary. We've developed a multifaceted program built around four key pillars, system of government, governance, forward looking and backward looking forums to ensure the right people are meeting at the right time, informed by the right facts and having the right debates. Metrics that matter, about, that's about establishing relationships transparency so we can jointly track and measure our relationship both in terms of the outcome and the behaviours so we can constantly evolve that voice of the supply chain, ensuring that we always understand what the supply chain's perspective of the relationship is and using those insights to form and drive uh, improvements. And also customer of a choice, and that's about creating a collaborative network. Those come together to not only underpin those com the commercial model that we've talked about, but also are feeding into a continuous improvement program, which is identifying and driving uh, 30 million incremental efficiencies on top of those delivered through the commercial models. Great, thank you, Lisa. So as you can understand, there's very many stakeholders affected <clears throat> by this large program of change. Seb, could you talk to us about some of the steps we took to really embed that change across that stakeholder group? Absolutely, and, and as you touched on there, those changes implemented to secure that 458 million of efficiency required. A shift in mindset, ways of working and, and behaviours across end-to-end -end processes and a vast set of different stakeholders and stakeholder groups. Consequently, it, consequently, ensuring all those stakeholders were engaged and ready for change was a key element of the programme success. To deliver this, we deployed quite a, a, an innovative approach to people change and a plan with a strong emphasis on bringing change to life. So it's fully understood, embraced and embedded across the organisation. Now, just to give you one example of how we innovated to embed change, we developed the Southern Waterway board game to use in stakeholder engagement sessions. And, and that, that's the, the picture you can see in front of you. This tool communicated key elements of the future state in an engaging way and encourage stakeholders to collaborate in a competitive environment. This successful and innovative approach to change has now also been deployed across other areas within Southern Water to drive improvements to customer service, regulatory compliance, and also to deliver further cost reductions. So now I'll hand back to Stephen, who's gonna summarize all of the overall outcomes of the program. Thanks, Herb, and uh, thanks to uh, all of you, really, for all the things you've highlighted. I think, in summary, um, uh, some really good outcomes for Southern Water. So not only did it help us achieve the efficiency targets, in fact, we exceeded those. So 458 million worth of efficiencies, um, which was supported and signed off by our finance function um, and a significant return on investment uh, um, uh, 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 made. Um, Equally, we had a high level of satisfaction from across all of our stakeholder groups. And you can see some really strong comments uh, from a couple of our executive leadership team. Uh, so Neil Coleman, 
and Jamie Ford. Um, but I think even more importantly, that it supported the Southern Water business plan uh, and our brand of Water for Life and creating a resilient uh, water future uh, in the Southeast. It also supported our uh, core values at Southern of succeeding together, always improving and doing the right thing. Uh, it enhanced how everyone was engaged in the supply relationships and in uh, the challenge that we had ahead. It created a, an effective team um, and uh, was clear on the accountabilities and responsibilities of everyone. Uh, we've had a really positive launch as we started this business year uh, and uh, as an outcome I'm really really proud of the fact that uh, one of the things it's helped us to do is to deal collaboratively with some of the recent challenges we've had in the supply chain so we take things like Brexit and the challenges around Covid all of those we've been able to respond to effectively and I think that is a result of the collaborative working relationships we established from this project um, so I'm really proud uh, that we've been or, or won uh, the uh, SIPS award and that really endorsed all the achievements we've made uh, throughout this 18 month programme um, and recognises the hard work, not just from my team here at Southern Water, the hard work from the team at Arcalis that worked with us, as well as those within our supply chain. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks to all of, of the presenters. Just to reinforce that point to finish. It has been a very complex program of change with procurement at its heart, but as you can see, with many other, other elements to it as well, uh, we're very proud of the collaboration and the outcome and just absolutely delighted that that's been recognised by SIPS as well. Uh, and at that point, I'd like to hand back to Emma. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Such a complex project and such like large scale as well. So I think the, the collaborative working there was really what, what came across um, for the judges, most definitely. And, and having you all here to present today is just testament to that, really, on um, what a team you, you've pulled together. So different organisations acting as one team, which is really great. So when you when you went through the, um, the process of pulling the um, the submission together did you work together as a as a group on that as a, a collaborative team steve do you want to pick we, up yeah we did but 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 actually emma and i think colleagues would would agree in a way it was quite easy because this is what we've actually done it's a real story and we've lived it um and we know what the challenges have been and we 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 knew we knew what we were trying to achieve from the from the start and we've been very purposeful around getting to that point um, so in that sense, because we've all lived it to such an extent, it was it was quite an easy story to to tell. I'm pleased it came across well, but we didn't find it hard to to set out. I guess that's because you've been working so effectively together. It is another testament to that too. I hope um, so. And what motivated you to enter then? What what was the the motivation behind that? Whose idea was it originally? Maybe Stephen, you'd like to talk to that one. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I certainly will. And um, uh, Emma, I, I, I think motivation for us was around recognising or getting formal recognition for the great achievements we've made. I, I think in pulling the submission together, it was a good way of celebrating our success internally and uh, with our supply chain and with our cadres. Um, but the real motivation was again about getting professional recognition from a professional body um, of, of the good work that we had all done um, and uh, the outcomes that we'd achieved. Um, so I think that's really where the motivation came from, uh, ha having something that we could uh, uh, celebrate from a, a, a professional recognition. And have you noticed the difference? I mean, I guess you've all been going away and shouting out about this success internally. Have you noticed a difference as it, as it made people um, view this team and your procurement teams in, in a different light, helped raise the profile, etc.? So, so again, Emma, you know, I pick up on, on behalf of the team. I, I, I would say absolutely from a Southern Water procurement team perspective, it's really raised our profile, not just within the business, uh, but externally. Mm, yeah. um, and you know it, it it's created in interest from others uh, to want to know what we've done um, and to see how they can we can share some best practice with them. I think it's helped us create networks um, across the industry. Um, I think it's helped us raise uh, what procurement as a function can do for a business. Um, you know we were at the heart of this change 
uh, for our business and it was a significant transformation for the business um, and it really demonstrates that with the right team effort with the right buy-in you can get real success and really recognize the value that procurement can br bring to an organization uh, and we certainly couldn't have done that with without the uh, support of Arcadis and, and the supply chain so um well, it's very well deserved because the results speak for themselves. So many congratulations to you all. I hope you all managed to celebrate in in some way, even though it was right in the in the midst of lockdown. <laughs> but um, yes, and hopefully not too distant future, you can all get together and, and still carry on and, and celebrate face to face. Thank you very much for sharing your story today and so many of you joining us. Hopefully it's inspired other people to, to, to enter this year. So hop along to the website, um, have a look at those categories, download the toolkit and, and how to enter um, and grab all those top tips. Hopefully you've been inspired today and I look forward to reading your submission next year. Thank you. Thank you.